Ken, thank you so much for hopping on the call and meeting with me today. Mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing whether or not we are to have you added as a member of our call center team. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Jordan, for the opportunity. First off, can you tell me about your experience as a customer support virtual assistant working in a call center? I've been in the virtual call center industry for nine years. I started as a customer service agent slash booking agent for an airline account in the U.S. After that, I also work as billing and sales representative for one of the biggest telco account in the U.S. Nine years. Very nice. Can you give me a sample of what your day-to-day -day task looks like for either of those experiences in relation to a call center? Yeah, sure. For the airline account, my primary function is to answer basic inquiries about the airport procedures. And also if the passengers has questions regarding what the flight or baggage restrictions, those are the type of questions that I'm answering. I I guess the main function that I was doing before is to rebook and reschedule canceled flight, especially if the flight is affected by any calamities or emergencies. I need to be quick and uh, looking for the next available flight because there's a possibility that the seat may no longer be available if we're not quick in providing those particular options. And with the telco account, it's almost the same thing, but I'm focusing more on answering basic inquiries about the products and services that we offer. We also provide additional services or upgrades depending on what the customer needs. And we also do basic troubleshooting with regards to issues that they have with the services. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Can you tell me specifically about a time when there were major issues, either a flight situation or as the account manager, and you didn't have all of the answers for how to respond to customers? How did you approach that sort of situation? It really happens all the time and it's normal, especially if the products and policies are changing from time to time. Normally what I do is if I don't know the answer, I try to make sure first that I exhaust all the resources that I have. I check the product updates, policy updates. And if in case I still don't have the answer, I also ask some assistance from my colleague because sometimes your colleague already knows those type of concerns. They have already handled those type of calls. And if in case they don't know the answer, then that's the time that I seek assistance to my supervisor or subject matter expert. That way they can also guide me regarding what, uh, the process and how we can resolve the issue. Issue. I also make sure to take note of the things that I learned from the particular call so that next time if I receive this, that type of concern, it would be easier for me to, to resolve the issue. How do you deal with an unreasonable customer? One thing that I learned is there's always a reason why they're unreasonable, you know. As mm -hmm. the representative of the company, it is my responsibility to identify that. Let me just give you an example. Let's say one of my callers started shouting at me on set of the call. They are angry, they're yelling, and they're asking asking for a supervisor. Most likely, they have already called us multiple times and the issue is still unresolved, so that's the reason why they're already angry and frustrated. What I normally do is I try to genuinely ask them first the reason why they're angry and if they could provide me a short background about what happened and their concern. Uh, that way, I will be able to assist them. And that's the time that they will give me a short information about the previous call that they have, about their problem. Once they provide me the information and the issue or the reason why they're frustrated, I acknowledge your concern I usually inform them that it's normal for you to feel that way, especially if that happened to you, regardless of the event. And if I'm in their shoe, I will be feeling the same way too. Uh, those are the things that I'm uh, telling to them, which we, it should really come to a place of someone who wants to genuinely help. Because if you're just telling those words as part of the script, then the customer on the other line would definitely feel that. You should try to genuinely help them. Once they feel that and we're able to discuss the problem, resolve the issue, I usually provide them a short recap as well about the call that happened and also about the things that we did to resolve the problem. That way, I can ensure that all the issues have been addressed before we finish the call. Switching gears here a little bit, but what are the tools you use? We actually use a lot of tools. One of the main tools that I'm using is, of course, a VoIP software so that I can receive and make calls. We also have desktop softwares, especially created for the company or for the account that I'm handling. CRM 
some softwares. I already used follow-up boss, Salesforce. There's actually a lot uh, depending on the company that you will be working with. Finally, can you give me four vital skills that an excellent customer support virtual assistant should have? Number one in the list would be communication skills because <laughs> you will be speaking with a lot of people over the phone. Um, they have different traits, characteristics, and concerns. You should be able to clearly express your thought in order for them to understand what you're saying. You should also be emotionally stable. People are calling you because they have problems and issues. You should not take it personally. We should always try to help them regardless of what you feel or what they say. You should always try to help them not only with their product needs or services needs, but also their emotional needs, which is really important. And you can do that through providing empathy and through making them feel that you genuinely want to help them. You should also be knowledgeable of the product, of course, because again, they're calling because they have some issues. As much as possible, you should be knowledgeable about the products and services that you're offering. And you should be ready to think outside the box because there are a lot of instances wherein customers will be asking you questions that are not the usual questions that you will be getting that will come in handy. The last one is efficiency. You must be efficient. As much as possible, you should resolve the issue as quickly as possible. But you need to make sure that you will not sacrifice the quality of your call just because you want to make it short. At the end of the day, if you're a customer service VA, your main goal is to provide quality and excellent customer service to your customers. Thank you so much, Ken. That was fantastic meeting you. I super appreciate you taking the time out here and we will get back to you shortly. Yeah, sure. I really appreciate your time as well, Jordan, and talk to you soon. Thank you.